right. Praise God tonight for another night of our time of uh, this Lent service as we are coming through uh, the time of, of, of worship and praise. And as we get ready to go into our prayer and praise tonight, just wanted to welcome everybody who's coming online tonight uh, to go ahead and uh, share your page and share it with your family, your friends, as we prepare to go live tonight and into the homes of every people. I see you're coming online, so come on, uh, share those pages, uh, hit those hearts, uh, make sure that uh, you are sharing the page tonight with those. And I want to um, personally thank everyone who has uh, been, I see you coming on, come on. Share those pages, hit those hearts tonight as we prepare to go into our Lent service tonight. Come on, come on, share your pages, hit those hearts, amen, so we can get everybody online tonight as we prepare uh, for our Lent services. Uh, and go ahead and hit those hearts so that we can share our pages with everybody else in the world. We're doing our 7 o'clock. Lent service during all of this time up until uh, Easter and uh, Resurrection Sunday. And so we're going to be on uh, live every Wednesday uh, at 7 o'clock p.m. And we'll be back with Wednesday in the Word a little bit later after that. But I want to get us started tonight as we are coming in. And I wanted to kind of just start us off with course understandment understanding of what Lent is and uh, I'm gonna do a little section each week on Lent um, because Lent is an important time in the Christian uh, faith for us uh, to take time and I'm going to emphasize this each week um, our spiritual discipline um, and it's not about how much we cannot eat or what we're going to give up for Lent, but it really has to do in a spiritual sense with discipline, spiritual discipline. So for some people, giving up chocolate uh, may not help them with their cussing. And so what you need to be working on is not cussing. Um, and for other people, it may be some other issues that you have in your life that you need discipline in that particular area. And that's why Lent is a time and a season for us as Christians to begin to practice spiritual discipline in certain areas of our lives. And as we do that, and we do this over the 40 day period, um, and as we do it over the 40 day period, we make sure uh, that uh, we make sure we're not fasting on any other days, uh, on the days except on Sunday. If Sunday is a day we do not fast, and that's how we continue to get our 40 days of Lent. And so as I begin tonight, I want to begin by uh, just allowing us to, uh, again, uh, hear uh, the scriptures uh, tonight. Uh, and uh, I want to share uh, in our hearings uh, tonight a couple of different scriptures that I want to make sure that we are aware of as we go into this season and as we are continuing to move forward in, in this season of Lent. Um, and here, um, uh, one of the things that uh, the psalmist helps us to understand um, as I get this up on my phone tonight because um, I'm used to doing Wednesday in the Word here um, on this particular psalm that I talked about um, some time ago, but I'll pull this back up just for tonight, and I want to read a little bit of this tonight as we look at Psalms 90. And um, the Bible says in Psalms 90, it says, Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations uh, before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth and the world. From everlasting to everlasting, you are God. And you turn us back to dust and say, turn back, you mortals. For a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday, when it is past, or a watch in the night. 
and you swing and, and you sweep them away like they are a dream, like the grass that is renewed in the morning and in the morning it flourishes and is renewed in the evening, it fades away and withers. For we are consumed by your anger and by your wrath we are overwhelmed. You have set our iniquities before you and our secret sins is, the, is in the light of your countenance. For all of our days pass away under your wrath and our years come to an end like a sign. The days of our life are 70 years or perhaps 80 if we are strong. And even then the span is only toil and trouble. And they are soon gone and fly away. Who considers the power of your anger? Your wrath is as great as the fear that is due you. So teach us to count our days so that we may gain a wise heart. Turn, O Lord, how long? Have compassion on your servants. Satisfied in the morning with your steadfast love, so that we may rejoice and be glad in all our days. Make us glad as many days as you have afflicted us, and as many years as we have seen evil. And let the works be manifested to your servants, and your glorious power to your children. And let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us, and prosper for us the works of our hand. O oh, prosper the works of our hands. All right, we're going to get ready for prayer tonight, and um, our chairman is coming, uh, Deaconess Angela Williams is coming. She's going to lead us into prayer, uh, and we're going to get ready for worship. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In this 7 p.m. hour, we thank you, Lord. Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you and praise your name. For in perfect faithfulness, you have done wonderful things, things planned long ago. Let us go before the throne of grace this evening. And we thank you this evening, Heavenly Father, that you saw fit to get us here. We bless and we praise your mighty name, O oh God. This is the day that you've made, and we're glad about it. We're glad to be here, God, to be able to rejoice we're glad to be here to be able to shout, dance, and sing your victory. We thank you, God, for your kingdom. Heavenly Father, this is the season that we're pulling down strongholds. We're pulling down the things that the enemy has stolen. We're pulling down your kingdom here on earth. We are believing you for the miraculous. We are believing you for healing. We are believing you for thanksgiving. We are believing you, oh God, for your name is worthy to be praised. And we thank you, Lord, for everything you're doing. We even know, God, that the refugees, we put them in your hands, God, as we cry out for the refugees, oh God. We cry out, God, as they cross and look for places to be safe, oh God. Let us not take life for granted, oh God, for we are safe, Lord, but it could have been us, God. It could have been us out there, oh God. Bless us, oh Lord, to be thankful. Bless us, oh Lord, to be giving. Bless us, oh Lord, to be warriors, warring on behalf of the refugees. Warring in this season of Lent. Warring on behalf of our families and our city and our nation, oh God. Let us be humbled by this, oh God. And we just thank you, God. We thank you for your love. We thank you for this day of fasting. And as we bring this day of fasting, let us be pure in our minds, pure in our hearts. Let us be transformed, renewed, made over, righteous, holy. And Lord, let us be available to you. Let us be available to you in the midnight hour in the three o'clock hour, every watch hour. Let us be available to do your will and do your work. The man prayed, the man of God prayed at 6 a.m. He covered all the bases. Let us be available to do your will. Let us not be lazy and teary and wandering to and from. Lord, let us not be lukewarm. I, we don't want to be spit out. Lord, let us be on fire for you in this lit season. We bring in your kingdom here on earth. We're bringing your glory here on on earth. We bring in your love here on earth. We bring in all of you here on earth. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Daddy. We love you, Lord. You're doing a good thing, Lord. Miracles are happening, Lord. Breakthroughs are happening, Lord. You're sitting us in high places, Lord. Businesses are opening, Lord. This is the season. This is the reason. It's all about you, God. 
And we just thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank it you. is in this day that we're glad. It is in this day that we're rejoicing. Hallelujah. I just can't stop praising your name. We rejoice Hallelujah. in your goodness. Thank amen you. and amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 This song says, Here I am to worship. Here I am. To bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, you're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to. So here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, you're all together lovely, all together. You're wonderful, 
You're wonderful. Oh, thank you, Jesus. You're wonderful to me. You are wonderful. You in this atmosphere, I'll pour my love, my love all over you. Yes, God, hallelujah. I'll pour my love, my love all over you. I'll pour my Let our worship Hallelujah. rise in this place. Hallelujah. That our love just overwhelms you. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to your name, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Here's my worship. Hallelujah. Take joy in it. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Let it be a dwelling place. Hallelujah. I want to put a smile on your face. Yes, God. I present my hallelujah. heart to you. 
I present my life to you. Here's my worship. Yes, Take joy in it. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Let it be a dwelling yes, place. God. Hallelujah. I want to put a smile on your face. I present my heart to you. I present my life to you. Yes, God. Here's my worship. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Yes. Take joy yes, in Lord. it. Let it be your dwelling place. I want to put a smile on your face I present my heart to you I present my life to you here's my worship smile here's my life whole smile I present my life to you. I present my heart to you. Here's my worship smile. Here's my worship smile. I present my to you I present my life to you hallelujah hallelujah glory to God glory to God in this place yes God hallelujah thank you Jesus the song just says Hallelujah. Yes, God. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Oh, I just want to thank the praise team for that pure worship. You don't need any music. You don't need a band. You just need a heart for God. You just need a heart to worship and know who you're worshiping. Hallelujah. We just thank you, God, for what you're doing today. Glory to God. I'm so happy to be here this evening on this Lenten, Lenten uh, service that we're having. So happy to be here on this Wednesday night in service. We're in the house today. Hallelujah. We are in the house. Yes, for everybody that's online, welcome to worship. Share this page with your friends. We are in the house for worship today. Good evening, Union Grace. I just want to give a good evening and a shout out and a hallelujah for what's going to happen this evening. I want to give an acknowledgement and give honor to God. And I want to give an honor to the man and the woman of this house. That is Bishop Reginald E. Smith and Lady Tracy Smith. I give honor to them because they have been a blessing to me. I just want to say thank you for them for allowing me to be a vessel in this house because they didn't have to, but they did, so I honored them today. And I also want to give a special thanks out to my husband who's here to support me this evening. That is Chris Glenn. I thank you for him because he didn't have to be here today, but he took time out to come and support me. So I love you and I say thank you for that because you don't always have support when you're in ministry. You could be by yourself with somebody. You could be by yourself with somebody. So I honor you, my husband, today. And I thank you for coming to support me. <laughs> I'm just going to go in and have a little prayer so I can get myself ready. Hallelujah. Lord, I just thank you for this day. I thank you that you woke me up this morning and that you had me on your mind. I thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do in this service today. God, there is no one that's like you, and you're faithful over everything. You knew this day was going to happen even before it started today, God, because you know the beginning and the end. You know our future because you hold it. And, Father, I thank you, Lord, for the word that's going to come forth today. I ask you to anoint me, Father. Let your words be true and come forth. Let ears be open and eyes be open and hearts be open to receive the word today. Let lives be changed and let, if it's one person, receive the word. All these things I ask in your name, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. If you have your Bibles today, would you turn with me to Matthew 6, 14 and 15? That is Matthew 6, 14 and 15. And I'm going to be reading out of the New Revised Standard Version for you today. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Bless the reading of the word today. Hallelujah. Today, I just want to come and talk to you today about forgiveness. Oh, yeah, forgiveness. And the thing why we want to talk about forgiveness, because it's that thing that everybody wants, but it's hard to give sometimes. Anybody ever had a problem with forgiving somebody? It ain't easy all the time. Oh, yeah, you can raise your hand. I'll talk about it myself. But it's something that we have to do. We've been commanded to do this. And, in fact, forgiveness sometimes is the hardest thing to do, but it seems like it's simple. Those simple words, I forgive you, are hard to come out of your mouth. If somebody hurts you, then for the majority of us, we want to react and we want to hurt people back. Generally, however, it involves a decision to let go. So that means forgiveness is on you. <laughs> it's a choice. Hmm. The act that hurt you, that offended you, you might always have some of it with you. But the forgiveness can lessen the pain. It's that grip on you that can, it can help you free you from the control that the person or that thing that's harmed you. Forgiveness doesn't always mean forgetting or excusing the harm that's been done. Or it doesn't make that person, you know, go without judgment. But the forgiveness is for you. It's for you. It's for you. 
Although it's necessary to forgive, the reality is that many people are plagued with unforgiveness. That unforgiveness causes health problems, <laughs> strains in relationships, and it goes against the principles of the Lord, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for what he's taught us. So today, I want to give you these three principles of why you should forgive. <laughs> Number one, because God has forgiven you. <laughs> God has forgiven you. Number two, because we want to be forgiven. And number three, because God has commanded us to do it. That's enough for me. Now, we know that Jesus often taught in parables. And he taught in parables so that people could understand. And at the time, you know, a lot of people didn't have Bibles and maybe weren't educated. So I'm just going to give you a parable that Jesus taught of. And that is out of Matthew uh, 18 and what is that, 23 through 35? This is the parable of the unforgiving servant. The unforgiving servant. Okay, let me tell you about what was going on in that parable. So there was a wealthy king who was taking account of all the uh, debts that were owed to him. And what he did was uh, he went to one of his servants who owed him something, and he wanted to collect his debt, right? So the servant uh, comes up to him, and he actually owed him 10,000 talents. So what 10,000 talents is, was a long time ago, or is, even is today, that could be about $25 million, or it could be a billion dollars. Whatever the cost, it was a debt he couldn't pay. <laughs> it was a debt he couldn't pay. He would never be able to pay it. He knew that he couldn't pay it. So he asked for forgiveness. He said, please, give me some time to pay this debt. That wealthy king said, okay, not only am I going to give you time, I'm going to forgive the debt. That forgiveness was such a good thing because what could have happened to him is his family could have been stoled off. And he would have been put to jail, sent to jail for the debt. But because he was forgiven, he went on his merry way. And I could imagine as he's walking, this is what happened, y'all. He goes on to see somebody that owes him some money. Remind you of the one that just was forgiven for his large debt. Imagine he's on seven mile or eight mile. I don't know where it was at. Just put that in there for the text. So he's walking down and he sees the person that owes him. <laughs> you know when you look for somebody to owe you some money. <laughs> he sees him and he runs up on him and gets gangster with him. He grabs him by his throat, pulls him down and says he wanted his money. The amount of money that was owed to him was not a lot of money. It was a couple thousand dollars was not the same amount of money that he owed in comparison. He owed this amount, and somebody owed him this amount. But he wanted his money back. And we do. We want our money back. But how dare you want your money back when you just got this whole huge debt removed from you? So the thing about it, while he grabs this man and shakes him and does whatever he does right to get his money, people are watching. Know that whatever you do, People are watching. <laughs> and when maybe people aren't watching, the Lord is watching. So people were watching, and what they did was they went back and they told the king of what he did. And the king was upset. Again, how dare you not forgive somebody for a debt, and I just forgave you for all of this that you did. So what did the king do? He retracted that favor that he gave him, and he sent him to jail. Mm-hmm sent him to jail. So what is Jesus trying to tell us in this parable? He wants us to know that as we were forgiven, that we need to forgive people. God has forgiven us for our sins. The debt has been paid and it was costly. And if we are the servant, which one do you want to be? Do you want to be the one that's forgiving or do you want to be the one that needs to be forgiven? I'm going to tell you where I want to be. I want to be forgiven. I want to be the one that's forgiven. Okay. So let me ask you the question. Is there any one of you that haven't forgiven anybody or have some unforgiveness in your heart? And you don't have to, you ain't had to answer it right now. But we're going to go through some things to figure out if you have it in your heart. <laughs> God has told us that in order to be forgiven, that we must forgive. That means he's put something in us to give us the ability to be able to do it. So I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to need the Lord. Because there's some things that are small, it's easy to forgive over. But there's some things that have hurt you, that are deep, 
And sometimes they've been, they're so deep, they've been in there years. You're going to need the Lord. You're going to need the Holy Spirit. <laughs> How do you know that you've got unforgiveness in your heart? I'm going to tell you. You might be angry. There's some signs of it, being angry and bitter. In every relationship and every experience, you're angry and you mean. Nobody don't know why, but people see it, okay? You become so wrapped up in things that are wrong that you can't live in the present and enjoy today. That's unforgiveness that's in your heart. It feels like life maybe has no purpose and no meaning, and your spirituality is being challenged because you have unforgiveness in your heart. The things that are valuable to you or should be valuable to you you ain't connected with them. You're not connected with people because you got unforgiveness in your heart. And here's the one thing. Check this one out. You might be sick. Unforgiveness causes sickness. Last year, the bishop had us reading this book on um, Switch on Your Brain. And what that particular book told us about was uh, negative thoughts. So if you begin to have these negative thoughts, they begin to internalize inside of your body and they can cause you to be sick. Well, unforgiveness is the same thing. It's going to internalize and be in your body. You may see it in different forms. Maybe it's a headache. Maybe you can't sleep at night. Maybe you're really sick. And Lord, help you if it turns into something like cancer or anything like that. I'm not a doctor. I'm just telling you that it turns into something. So that being said, why should we forgive? Go back to it again. Because God has forgiven us. Because we want to be forgiven. And because God has commanded us to do it. And like I said before, that's enough for me. God has forgiven you your sins, and it's a debt that you could not repay. But Jesus paid it all. And he's requiring you to do the same. You have to forgive. And sometimes when there's unforgiveness... <laughs> We begin to try to handle the problems ourselves. And when that happens, a lot of times that's when revenge kicks in. But God says, vengeance is mine, I shall repay. The battle is not yours, it's the Lord's. There was a lady, she had um, two kids. She had a three-year-old and a seven-year-old. So the mother was in one room and the kids were in another room. And what happened is uh, she heard the oldest child, the seven-year-old, start to cry. So she goes in there, and she goes to see what's going on. And when she looks, and she sees the three-year-old. If you ever had a brother, my brother would do this to me. The three-year-old has the seven-year-old by the hair, pulling one of them ponytails. And so she said, uh, you know, don't do anything to the seven-year-old. She doesn't know any better. So don't hurt her. Don't, don't hit her. Don't, don't retaliate. And she said, the little girl said, oh, okay. So the mother leaves out the room again. When she, comes, when she gets, leaves out the room, she hears another cry. This time it's the baby. So she run back in the room again and see what's going on. The seven-year-old is pulling the three-year-old's hair. And she said, yeah, she didn't know what it was before, but she know what it is now. They feel like that pain. And that's how we do. We want to put that revenge and that pain back on people, but that's not what God has commanded us to do. He said for us to forgive. Let him fight our battles. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. <laughs> We also want to be forgiven. None of us are perfect, and all of us have come short of the glory of God. I know that I have. I'm imperfect, imperfect, and if you know me, I'm imperfect, and I'm proud to say it. I can't live up to perfection, and none of us ever will, because there was only one. So when you see me, hey, and I make a mistake, you laugh, because I'm going to laugh, but I'm going to get back up again. And if I offend you, forgive me. I'm coming back, okay? I'll ask you for forgiveness. I'll say I'm sorry. I ain't above that. I just ask you to do the same. It's the golden rule. God has commanded us to forgive. So in Matthew 18 and 35, he says, So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother and sister from your heart. Matthew 11 and 25 says this one. And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, Forgive them so that your Father in heaven may forgive you of your sins. So if you haven't forgiven anybody, don't get up and pray. Keep your prayer to yourself. 
is worthless. Not because I said it, because the word said it. Keep your little nasty prayer because it ain't doing nothing but falling to the ground. Again, not my word, but the word. <laughs> so how do we forgive? What should we do? What are the principles to do it? Oh, they're out there. It's out there. Now, I'm going to start with one. You might have to get professional help because something might be deep. I'm going to just go with start off with that one, okay, because I'm not a professional. I'm going to give you some, some small stuff. But you might need to dig to somebody that's went to school to be able to help you, okay? But the first thing you need to do is pray. Pray for your offender and pray for yourself, all right, because you're going to need it. You're going to need that Holy Spirit. The next thing you need to do is acknowledge the hurt. If you don't know there's a problem, how can you fix the problem? If you don't know what's wrong with you, how can you fix it? And again, that might take professional because you might have to dig real deep to figure out what that is. Except that you can't ex change the situation. What they say, it is what it is. It is what it is. Some things are final. Somebody might be all passed on that you might need to forgive. It is what it is. But you need to go ahead and let it go and forgive them because, again, it ain't for them. It's for you. Learn that forgiveness is for you and not for them. Because I bet you probably thought it was for the other person, but that's wrong. It's wrong. It's just principles of the word. And then the last thing is repair and restore. Now, here's the thing about this. This might help some of you because just because you repair the relationship doesn't mean it has to be restored. You're just getting forgiveness. You don't have to go back and have dinner, invite them over to your house, whomever, what it is. You just have to forgive them. It may never be restored. It may be just good enough so you can say good morning. It may be just good enough so you can sit in the same room with them and be cordial. It may be that you never see them again, but hallelujah, just forgive them. Because if you want to see Jesus, you're going to have to do that forgiving. And also, we'll just go on to some health benefits. Depression. Anger. Stress. Cardiovascular disease. Pain. I'm going to go back to cardiovascular disease. What that means to me is you need to check your heart. Check your heart for the symptoms and check your heart for the disease. Because it's twofold there. But when you do have forgiveness, what you're going to get, you're going to have some hope. You're going to have some compassion and self-confidence. So I'm going to tell you, brothers and sisters, on the Internet, in here in the service, it ain't easy. And when I talk about forgiveness, I'm telling you because I know. There's been some things that I've had to forgive people about. I didn't ever think I was going to come into these situations, but they've happened. I had a situation at work where this lady came and um, she worked I, she, she worked with me and I don't even know what happened, but all of a sudden she put these charges on me. These charges could have cost me my job. These charges were so bad that they had, we had to have, uh, uh, HR had to come in, uh, people had to give statements, okay? And thank God that I have a God that had my back, okay? Victory was mine. And I'm not going to go all into everything that happened, but I will say this. I could have lost my job at that time for 27 years. My reputation was in the, was in the balance. For something that I didn't do, I can't tell you to this day why this lady did this stuff. But she didn't come at me once. She came at me again twice. But just real quick about the job that we, the God that we serve, when she came at me the first time, I had forewarning about it. Now, the situation didn't get handled as it should have uh, when they should have spread us apart, but that's okay. It's all right. But my character spoke before me. My teammates spoke for me, and God went before me. So here I am still here today with 29 years, two more years, and she's gone. That's a whole other story. But, but, the, but the thing I want to talk about is that hurt because it was embarrassing. And the fact that people were talking, I had to hold my head up high and keep going. And then I had to let go of that anger because I was mad at what she tried to take from me. She tried to take my livelihood. I done moved up here to Michigan, okay, to my husband that came up here with me, and you trying to get me fired? No, dog, that ain't going to happen, okay? You need to take that on back because I serve a God that went before me and went behind me, and it's done. But I had to forgive her, and I've forgiven her. I've moved on. Where she's at, I don't know. 
but God bless her anyhow. Hey, I hope everything is going great. I hope she's got a good job. I hope, you know, everything goes well for her because that ain't my battle. But the thing about it is she wasn't worth the cost of my salvation. She wasn't worth the cost of not forgiving. And not only is she not worth it, anybody else that you hold a grudge against, anybody else that you have unforgiveness on, they are not worth the cost of your salvation. They're not worth the cost of your relationship with Jesus Christ. So I just say, check yourself, check your heart. We love to talk about the cross, especially at this time of the year. He died on Friday. And early Sunday morning, he got up. But let's talk about what did he get up for? He got up for your atonement. He got up to cancel that debt that you couldn't pay through that blood. And he got up for a lot of things, but forgiveness of your sins was definitely one of them. Here's what I want you to know and to take from all this. This is funny right here because I'm, I'm coming to you, Bishop. Jesus taught us how to pray. He told us what to do. Now, we've been reciting the Lord's Prayer every Sunday. And when it started, I was like, okay, you know, we love the Lord's Prayer. But all of a sudden, it started really getting in my spirit because I said, Lord, you are preparing the people for this particular sermon, okay? you preparing them for this message. You know. So you know the prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Now, you're going to meditate on this and, and just think about what you've actually been saying. What's been in your spirit as you've been saying that prayer? So I, I started thinking about it. I'm like, ah, oh, our Father which art in heaven. Yep, 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 yep. Love it. Give God the honor. Hallowed be thy name. Oh, yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Your kingdom come, thy will be done. Bring it on, Lord. And on earth as it is in heaven. Oh, yeah, I'm feeling that. All right. We ready for that. Give us this day our daily bread. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your provisions, Lord. You're so good. I trust you. You provided for me. Forgive us of our trespasses. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Lord. Forgive me for my sins. Thank you that my sins as far as the east is to the west. I trust you, Lord. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you that my Lord, my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. You know my heart and blah, 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 whatever else you think about when you have that. But here's the thing. There's a little bit more to it than that. Forgive me of my trespasses. The other part says, as we mm -hmm, forgive those that trespass against us. That's the part don't nobody want to talk about. That's the part I think we're skipping right on over. Because we got all the other fundamental parts that have something to do with us. But this time, this is something we have to give. <laughs> This is a give. We've been taking, taking, taking. The part that is not asking for protection, it's not asking us to thank him, it's not asking us to glorify him, it's not, it's not asking us to forgive. This one says, forgive those that trespass against us. Now, I done heard the Lord's Prayer several times, and I done heard some good preaching about it. But I never realized that that was the ask. Let us not forget the ask. We give in worship, we give an offering, but what about forgiveness? Are you giving that? Ah, I, I want you to be free. I'm just saying, don't go around here and quote Martin Luther King, you know, free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, I'm free at last when you really ain't free. You might be out of jail, but if you ain't forgive somebody, you ain't free. You might have gotten divorced. You might have left a job or moved from a situation. But if you haven't forgiven anybody, you ain't free. So this is where the altar comes in, that cleansing place. If you ever sought or have an alt against your brother or your sister, you need to forgive them. If you have some people that you've not forgiven, the one who touched your children, come on now, sexually assaulted your children, the one that took your money, used your identity, or maybe didn't help you in the time of need that you needed them. I'm talking about those people. Oh, yeah. The ones you really don't want to forgive. This is putting your Christianity to the test. It's the secrets in your family. It's the secrets in your family. 
It's the secrets in the church. What do you need to forgive? Oh, God, there's a lot of things that we need to forgive around here. But we just walk on past them and dust them all off. But as we walk past them and dust them all off, they're just eating us up. Oh, it's coming up here because you walked past it year one. Now it's up to your knees because it's year two and three and you ain't doing anything about it. Oh, God, you're still walking past them and still mad at them and it's up to your waist. Four, five, six years later, now it's up to your head. And when it's in your head, you can forget it because you ain't no good because you've got that reprobate mind to a degree, to a sense, because you can't get it out. There's, everything has something to do with that. When you see that person, you might see revenge. When you get past them, you might want to do something to them. I don't know what the situation is. If it's somebody that's assaulted your children, your baby, somebody in your family, come on, your mother. We got certain things you can't touch. My mother is one of them. Especially if there's somebody that can't take care of themselves. That's a line you can't cross. Oh, God, help us. Help us with that, but you still have to forgive. And again, it's not for you or not for them. It's for you. This is the time to lay those burdens down and lay them at the altar. Are you the king leader that's not showing mercy to your coworkers? Direct reports or the one that you work for? What about your neighbor that you're supposed to love? No one is exempt. It's time to release what's had you bound. It's time for peace. It's time to lay it down at the altar, whether you're in your home, whether you're in your seat, whether you're in your car, or whether you're right here. It's time to lay that burden down. It's here for you. The Lord is here for you to exchange your hurt, your pain, your guilt for freedom, health, Redemption and a sound mind. And again, know that forgiveness is not for the offender. It's for you. And it's not an option. So my heavenly father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. That is the words of the Lord. So you got to remember the principles. What did Jesus say on the cross? He said, forgive them for they know not what they do. When we deal with the people that are around us, that have offended us and hurt us, we know that we are not dealing with them, but we are dealing with flesh. We're not dealing with flesh and blood, but we're dealing with principalities and wickedness in high places. So don't mistake forgiveness for weakness because Jesus wasn't weak. In fact, he was the strongest. He was the strongest. He took on the sins of the world. He took on that unforgiveness that you don't want to give. And you might not think that this is fair, but neither was it when Jesus went to the cross for all of your sins and paid a debt that he didn't owe. We don't deserve any of it, but he did it anyway. It was a show of the ultimate love. Hallelujah. Father from the Father and from the Son, and it was that cross. It was the blood. It was that cross. It was the blood. It was the cross. <laughs> it was that blood. It was the cross. For your sins, they were for the drug problem, the person with the drug problem. It was for the thief, for the liar, for the adulterer, for the slanderer, for the unrighteous. And the word tells for some of these were some of you. But God, hallelujah. But God, the salvation and the redemption that he's come and that he's given to us, he's still alive. And it's here for you today. He came to set the captives free. So let go of your unforgiveness. Let it go for your mind. Let it go for your sanity. Let it go for your salvation. Because you have been forgiven. And it's up to you. Hallelujah. Amen. Hey, God bless you. Praise God today. Let's stay right there, Reverend, in a minute. We thank God today for uh, that word. And before uh, you sign off line, we're going to get ready to give tonight. I want you to get an offering prepared tonight. Those of you online and those of you in the sanctuary, go ahead and get an offering that we can sow into the life of this preacher and into this service tonight. I want you to get uh, your best offering you can during these Lent services ready. I'm not going to put an amount on it. You've been fasting and praying. God will tell you what you need to do and what you need to give tonight. 
And what a powerful, powerful, powerful breakthrough word uh, tonight. That was a breakthrough word, Reverend, that hard areas of our lives that, that we have to break through some stuff. Yeah, that's a, a wonderful word tonight. And I'm going to talk about it a little bit more, but it is a breakthrough word that unforgiveness can be like concrete. You know, you got to you got to chisel through that thing. Yeah, and I appreciate that word tonight. Uh, it blessed my soul tonight. And we, I know you're online and listen, as you are already giving your offering, you're online. And I'm going to have Reverend come back and she's going to pray over us tonight um, as we have to surrender to God uh, all of our unforgiveness. Uh, and that's people that have hurt us. And as she said, people who have mistreated us and lied on us and have done all kinds of ill manner things against us and uh, I want you to I want you to minister in the spirit of God in a minute and you're going to come back and pray a prayer over us tonight before we get out of here because we don't want to come through Lent and not have been broken uh, we don't want to come through Lent Lent is for all of us this is not just a performance or a service just to put on it's for all of us, and so all of us need areas in our lives where God needs to work, and God is working on all of us, and I appreciate that word tonight, that as we break through um, this, these areas of hardness, and maybe you're online tonight, and uh, you haven't forgiven somebody, and maybe uh, it's been hard, and you've been trying to do it, and maybe uh, you thought you had done it, and maybe you thought you had gave it up, and maybe you thought you were over it, um, but every time you think about it, the anger and the, and the resentment comes back, and you want to you wanna reach out and do something, and you want revenge, in the, and uh, we have to let it go. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. And so we're going to pray tonight. Uh, Reverend Glenn is going to come back. She's going to pray over all of us tonight. And if you're here at the in the sanctuary, you want to come down to the altar. I tell you what, let's just come on down to the altar. That way we don't have to pick nobody out. Um, all of us need to come to the altar. Those who are coming to the altar tonight, come on to the altar. Just just come and, and, and just surround this altar um, at tonight if you can. And just, just come right here in the center. They're not going to be able to see you on, 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 on the cameras down there, but just come on down anyway if you can, if you can. All of us who can, come on, and we'll come to the altar. I'm not asking you for forgiveness. Just come on anyway. All of my men, come on, minister. Just come on. You don't have to have anybody you need to forgive. Just come on to the altar anyway. Amen. Praise God. And so she can pray and we can touch and agree. Because this is a season, we're not just doing services. I'm, I'm, I'm better, I better stop it. <laughs> we ain't just doing services. Yeah, yeah, we 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 got to have some breakthroughs. Uh, yeah, we need some. That's it. That's it, Deaconess. We need deliverance, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna be victorious in what God has for us. I I feel my spirit already leaping. I better stop, girl, because. Uh, my spirit leaping tonight that if we if we're gonna get where God wants us to go we gotta let go of some stuff hallelujah and this is a powerful powerful breakthrough word tonight so let Bishop stop talking you come on and, and pray for everybody online stay online for just a moment and, and you you know where you are you know who you have uh, been struggling with and what you've been struggling with and I want her to pray a prayer over all of us tonight in Jesus' name. And so let's all turn to the altar as she prays the prayer of forgiveness tonight. Heavenly Father, I come to you today saying thank you, God. Thank you, God, for who you are. Thank you, God, that there is no one like you. You are the creator of all things, the heaven and the earth. And because you've created all things, we trust you and we come to you. Tonight, we are coming to lay our burdens down at this altar. We are coming to look to you for where our help comes from. There are many things that are coming across our minds and our hearts today, God, and you know every one of them. You knew that we would be here on this day, and you knew that the altar would be ready waiting for us. God, I ask you right now, Lord, to forgive us of anything that we've done. 
forgive us of anything in our heart and just renew our mind and spirit, Father. I ask you, Lord, that you look on your people right now and you begin to speak to them as they look introspectively into their hearts. Look deep into their hearts and see if there's anything uh, searching their hearts that needs to be renewed and re restored. And if there's anybody that they need to have forgiveness against. And God, it may not be forgiveness. God, you know what the needs are at the altar. But God, forgiveness, that root, that root that's hurting people, that root that's keeping people stuck, that root that's driving wedges in families and driving people apart. I'm asking you to come into the hearts, God, and I'm asking you to soften up the heart, Lord, and be able to change the mindset, God. Lord, so that, 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 that as that root spreads and it goes deep into something bad that you're taking it up, God. You're taking up the, God, the root and you're putting new seeds down, God. It's the springtime, Lord, so new seeds and a fresh season is coming. And so I thank you right now, God, that you're planting a new heart in everybody, a new mind in everybody, God, because you do the renewing of the mind and the spirit. Father, I thank you right now, God, for the remembrance of what it is, God, because some things are so deep that you don't even know what it is. And in order for it to be changed, you got to know what it is. You've got to know what you're asking for. We're asking for the forgiveness, God. Open up the mind and the heart, God. Teach us, God, your will and your way of how to forgive. You said that we have to forgive in order to be forgiven, and we want to see you again. We want to be forgiven, and we know what you've done for us, and God, help us to be able to do the same thing for somebody else. Oh, God, let me be the first one to say, forgive me. Forgive me for anything that I've done. And Lord, help me if there's somebody that I have an odds against. But God, I thank you that even during this sermon, you've been pouring out and you've been changing hearts and you've been renewing my mind and spirit. And I know if you do it for me that you can do it for anybody else. I thank you, Lord, that you're changing my household. So change other households, change other marriages, change other things at the job, change other places in the neighborhood. Everywhere we plant our feet, God, you direct our path for healing, for deliverance, God, because you're the way maker. You are the healer. So touch each one of us, God, on the internet, in the service. Give us what we need because we look to you for where our help comes from. You are the ultimate healer. You fix our hearts and our mind. You direct our path as we acknowledge you today and say, thank you, God. We say, thank you, God, for what you're doing today. Thank you for what you're doing in the spirit. Thank you for what you're doing in the natural. Thank you for what you're doing for everybody that's represented here and that's not here, God. Thank you for the people that couldn't ask for the help, God, but you're doing it anyway because that's just the kind of God you are. Oh, I love you, Lord. I thank you, God, for your cleansing power. I thank you for your healing power. And as we're in this Lent ceiling, I thank you, Lord, that you died on that cross. You died on that cross for this forgiveness that we we're asking for and much more. And so we say, we owe it all to you. You are our father. You are our strength. You are our deliverer. You are the way maker. And miracles happen when we point our hearts towards you. So we're looking for the miracle today, Lord. And as we go on our ways today, Lord, I just thank you that the healing is taking place as we go to our cars, as we lay in our beds, as we walk throughout our house as we go on our way, that you're doing the healing in the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord, we just give you the honor, the praise that's due your name. You are mighty. You are holy. And you are a righteous God. And so because of those things, we look to you and we say thank you again. You have all power, dominion, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And praise God today for you being with us for this service. And I'm going to let that be the prayer of benediction as well. Thank you so much for joining us online. And all of you who came tonight, we thank God for you. And we'll be back here next week for our third installment of our Lent service. God bless you all. Y'all have a wonderful night. And thank God for you. Amen.